Hello, my name is Scott Nesbitt. I'm the pastor of the First United Presbyterian Church in Clinton, Iowa. I want to thank you for checking out this worship video. We appreciate your interest. If you do not have a faith community of your own and you're in our area, you're welcome to join us any Sunday morning at 9.30. If you're not in our area, I invite you to check out the Houses of Worship near you. For even though this video allows us to share a message of faith, worship is about being in a community. It's about being with other people who are seeking to give faithful worship to God. In the meantime, I pray that this video will give you encouragement, will give you hope, that it might comfort you and even give you insight. May the peace of Christ be with you. Um, basically, you have all the announcements right here in the bulletin and uh, projected up on the screen. The, uh, just a couple of things to bring your attention to is uh, right over here, we have the pumpkin voting contest. You're supposed to put money into the pumpkin box that you like the best and uh, that's who the winner will be, whoever has the most money in that box. And then the money that goes will be uh, that goes to impact will go towards anti-bullying uh, mission. And uh, this is the last day to be able to do it. So you've got to do it because after worship you're going to collect up the boxes and start telling the points for whoever wins the, uh, the pumpkins. Um, but then also, just a word of just interest to you, perhaps, uh, Whitney Elkins, who is the number here, uh, is going to be rappelling down the side of the Black Hawk Hotel at Davenport on Wednesday, October 30th, around 1 p.m., and she said she'd love to see some friendly faces there cheering her on. So uh, uh, if you're able to get down there and want to watch somebody climb down the side of the building, that's the day to do it. Uh, should be fun. Today, too, of course, is, our, uh, is going to be our fun for all time. We're having a Halloween party up in Great Hall. I don't have any other announcements. Is there anything else we should have done? Do you have a couple things? Okay. Quick reminder, I haven't had any office this week, but as I have deadlines and appointments and other things, if you know you're going to need to see me this week, make an appointment with me this morning so I'm sure to have that time available for you. Um, Budget requests are due next Sunday, so I have time to put them together for Pastor and Luca to go through before they take it to session. And also, wait a little longer into this year because we have so much going on, but it is time to collect things for college boxes to send to our students. And I also need updates. If, if you know some of the families from our church that have college students, remind them that I need updated addresses. So we send their college please boxes to the right place. So the next two Sundays will collect that and get it out before Thanksgiving. Thanks. Any other announcements this morning? Well, if there are none, let us take this time to bring our hearts to God and prepare for worship. Foundation of 
our government. One of the signers of the Declaration of Independence was the Reverend John Witherspoon, a Presbyterian, the only Christian minister to sign. Would you please rise for the call to worship? This is the day the Lord has made.
began digging around in the trash and making musical instruments. And what we'll do here is we'll hear a little bit of the story, hear a little bit of the music. Uh, there's, a, there's, I think at this, the end of this video they mentioned something about uh, a movie is being made about this, and so there's some information on that at the end. But I want you to just hear their story about people in desperate circumstances. And remember what one man says when he is up there, that a violin is more expensive than a house where they live. So let's watch the video. Well, like I say, videos and technology work well, they work well. And if they don't, they don't. Uh, we apparently have a slow connection on the internet, so it's taking time to uh, load up. But uh, if you get a chance, where do you want to start getting to see if that helps? And that was stuff. Yeah, we don't worry about it. Oh well, that's like. Okay, all right. She'll put it in tomorrow's email on the website. Uh, so you can watch it at home, but it really is a fascinating uh, video. And uh, essentially, like I said, this is a community in Paraguay that digs through the trash and they make violins and bass fiddles and flutes and saxophones out of things like forks, pipes, corks, bowls, uh, wooden spoons, you name it, big uh, metal barrels. And you think, boy, that does sound bad, but really when they start playing, you listen, it's beautiful, beautiful music. And one of the things, like I said, is that a fellow in here in the city who says, a violin costs more than a home in that community. But there's also another phrase that is brought up in this video that I think is important. As they sort through their trash, the people say, we should be careful about what we throw away. But more importantly, we should be careful about who we throw away. I leave you with that thought and let us pray. Holy and gracious God, all of us are valuable in your sight. All of us are your children. Thank you, O oh God, for your mercy and your grace that abounds forever. Bless us in this time that our hearts may be opened to you and our spirits filled by your spirit. In the name of Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture lesson this morning comes to us from the book of Joel, chapter 2, verses 23 through 32. O children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the later rain as before. The threshing floors shall be full of grain, the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter. My great army, which I send against you, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I, the Lord, am your God, and there is no other. And my people shall never again Then afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. 
Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Even on male and female slaves in those days, I will pour out my spirit. I will show portents in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and terrible day that the Lord comes. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be those who escape. As the Lord has said, and among the survivors shall be those whom the Lord calls. And from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven. It was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, for all who exalt themselves will be humble. For all who humble themselves will be exalted. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To a degree, Jesus' story about the Pharisee and tax collector might seem a bit hard to relate to. Most of us probably don't have the chutzpah to come to the church and say, Hey, God, I'm great, you know it. But very few of us have the, the, the guts to pray anything near that. Lord, you know how special I am. You know all the good things I'm doing in the community and all the wonderful things I do for my church. And you know that uh, when you and I face to face at the end of my life, we're just going to be just like that, buddy, buddy, because you know how great I am. Most of us really don't pray like that, do we? I have no doubt that people often say to themselves, however, at least I'm not as bad as that person. We may not tell God how great we are, but in different moments in our lives, whether it be in prayer to God or as an offhand remark to someone else, we do say, maybe even just to ourselves, at least I'm not like that guy. At least I've got problems, but man, at least I don't have a family like that lady. We do it, don't we? All the time. It's still pretty gutsy, don't you think, to say that? Because even though it isn't coming to God and saying, you know how great I am, it is by making those sorts of comments similar to saying to God, well, hey, God, thank you for making me better than him or better than her. But there is still truth in the parable because even if we don't come right out and say it, we still often believe that our works get us into heaven. We do think that. Maybe we don't say it out loud ourselves. But there are different moments in which we do kind of believe that, well, we're, we're good enough to get into heaven. 
we're good enough to be on God's side. We're, 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 we're decent enough people. Aren't we? Well, some of that good stuff has got to count for something, doesn't it? I don't know how many times I've been talking with people preparing for a funeral, and the individual who has passed away never went to church uh, or, or was very sporadic in attendance, maybe even uh, was an outright atheist and just didn't believe anything. And as I sit with the family, comments that come to me are things like, well, Sally was a real good mother. Frank was a, was a guy who was involved in his community. Bob was just a real nice guy. There's a certain sense in which they all recognize that maybe his life or her life didn't represent a godly perspective. But they want to say, he at least had this good stuff going on here. So, you know, he wasn't a scoundrel. He wasn't like some of those other people, you know, the really bad ones, the really nasty people who certainly aren't going to make it to heaven. Well, you know, he's at least going to stand outside the gates of heaven and be able to point and say, hey, God, look, I'm not there. Ticket out of 
purgatory straight into heaven. This was what the church taught. And the gentleman by the name of Martin Luther began to question this. So he tapped up these 95 theses on the church door, expecting response. Now, you might think that's kind of odd. Why would he do that? But in that day and age, you wouldn't tap something up onto the church door. It was the community bulletin board. And he anticipated that there would be other priests and religious people on the opposite side of the argument who would debate with him and post their thoughts, and therefore the church could be in dialogue over this whole matter. But instead it blew up in his face. And Catholicism no longer had the hold on Europe that it once did. Bit by bit, chunk by chunk, people began to say, hey, you know, this grace thing really sounds pretty good. I don't want to have to climb the stairs of a church kissing each one. I don't want to have to go on a pilgrimage on my knees. I don't want to have to pay for my way into heaven. It's by God's grace. John Calvin, the founder of Presbyterianism, came along shortly thereafter and expanded on that concept. is ours. And we don't need a priest to stand between us and God. All of us have direct access to God through Jesus Christ. The pastor then is not a priest. He's just a regular guy like the rest of you who just happens to talk once a week about Religious things like how good it is to be a Christian and, and uh, give you encouragement for living your life. But he's a sinner too. Man, is he a bad sinner. And we all stand under God's grace. We all live in the family of God together as he Joel's message underscores the very goodness of God. We go back to that. He speaks of God saying, You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. My people shall never again be put to shame. You know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord of your God. There is no other. My people shall never again be put to shame. O Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the late rain, as before. God pours it all down. As it goes on to say in Joel, there will come a day when the Holy Spirit will be poured out on men and women, young and old, poor and rich alike. And we believe that time has come. And that all of us are poured into by the Holy Spirit. You see, Jesus takes that message even further from Joel. He says, God's grace is abundant, not just in general, but specifically, personally, not just a general God sends good rain to everybody and God makes sure that the sun shines every day, but that God's grace is individual. So the tax collector who does nothing but beat his breast and say, Lord, have mercy. God sends mercy to him. Now lest I send you home thinking, well, that's good for the tax collector. That's wonderful. At least I'm not like that Pharisee. No, we have to remember all of us 
stand under God's grace. Even the Pharisee in the story is under God's grace. You see, God's Spirit is poured onto all people, and all people have a place. So be careful. If you go about, be careful. Don't say, thank God I'm not the Pharisee, or thank God I'm not the tax collector. Hold back from the comments of, at least I'm not like that person, or at least my family isn't as dysfunctional as that one. You know, these are all our problems together. And there is not one of us who can step forward but by the grace of God. In that video I was hoping to show you, I would point back to the comment that we should be careful not only about what we throw away, but who we throw away. You see, all, all people, even the ones who push our buttons and make us scowl, even the ones who really just rankle our days, they stand under God's grace. And even you, if you have to rank someone up, or get someone's knickers in a twist, you stand under God's grace. All people have value. All people are called. And all people Let us take this time to be in silent prayer. God of mercy, God of grace. We come today with hearts open to you. There are many places in which we have failed to be cheerful witnesses. And there are also places where we know we have done well. We pray that whatever we do, whatever we say, would be brought up in your spirit of grace and held by you in mercy. Transform all that we do, all that we say, so that it might bring you glory. benefit the world around us. Even when we make a mistake, even when we foul up, even when we do something completely wrong, we pray by the power of your redemption that you would transform it to be for the good. We are grateful to you for one another, for this life that we have for the opportunities that stretch before us, for the very moment to take a breath and to feel, to feel what is in our hearts this moment. All come as a gift from you. 
We pray on this day for the world around us. We pray for farmers that this harvest season would be a safe one. We pray for those who find themselves in desperate circumstances this weekend. Grant them hope. We pray for those who are victims of domestic violence and those who inflict violence by your grace change hearts that need to be changed. And for those who are victims, we pray for safety and protection. We pray for all those who work to serve and protect the people Firefighters, police, doctors, nurses, city workers, county workers, people who give up their time so that we might live day to day. We pray for those in leadership that they would have wisdom and that they would use it. We pray for our community. We pray for the people within this room and those who should be in this room. Bless them. And we pray for those who cannot be here. Grant them your grace and strength on this day. We lift to you prayers deep in our hearts for one another, for friends and family, for personal petitions. We give them all to you, and we trust that you will receive them in grace. So we give all these things to you now, in the name of Jesus Christ, and we pray as he taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now at this time, we give thanks to God through our offerings. We look to see what we have received and what we can share and how we can give God the greatest glory. Let us gather this morning's offering. Let us join together in the unison prayer. Creator God, we know that you have made everything in this world. You have been so generous to us every day. May what we offer here show our generosity in giving back to you what is already yours. Amen. Once more, thank you for checking out this video. We're grateful for the time that you've spent to give it your attention. 
Since we've started posting our videos, I've been asked, how do I make a donation to your church? I've been reluctant to answer the question because the purpose of the videos has not been to raise money for the church. However, because the question has come up more than once, I've decided to offer this as a response. If you are moved to make a donation because of our videos, we thank you. But we also invite you to consider these questions. First, are you genuinely moved to make a donation? No donation should be given out of obligation, fear, coercion, or guilt. It should come genuinely from the heart. Two, can you afford it? There is some value to spiritual sacrifice, but there's a difference between making a sacrifice that glorifies God and sacrificing at your own peril. Make sure that you can afford it. And three, is this donation not going to take away from what I already give? If you give to a church or to a charitable organization of some sort, and then you're thinking of taking away from that to give to us, please don't. We do not want to be the recipients of someone else's blessings. But if you can answer yes to all three of these questions, then thank you again. And you may give to us by joining us for worship on Sunday mornings, 9.30, sending us something through the mail. Our address is 400 Fifth Avenue South, Clinton, Iowa, 52732. Or you may check us out on the web at firstunitedpres.com, and there is a link there. We genuinely appreciate all that you have given in your time, and we genuinely appreciate any gifts that you share. May God bless you this day 